I must have been fucking hell, six, five, six years old. And I'm stood there like this. And my mum took the picture. I had Lego pants on and these <laughs> boxing gloves that she bought me for Christmas. And the thing that fascinates me, mate, it's the stance. Yeah, it's that you perfect. Were, it was, no, yeah, it was like, like naturally I look at there. it and it was the balance, yeah, the yeah. way the hands were, were positioned. That's why when I say you bought, there, you yeah. must be, because yeah. no one showed me anything. And I'm like, how did I know how to stand like that? Here's a question. Do you have to wear the green PFL shorts in every fight? Yeah. So there's no way for this next fight you can wear Lego pants just as an homage, <laughs> as an homage to the young Brandon. Is there no way you can get the one there? So what it is with PFL? Wear them under. When you it, win, take the other yeah, ones the Lego off. Pants the Lego pants on. I love yeah. them Lego <laughs> pants, mate. It's the stand for me though, but I can't wait to yeah. post it. Um, but yeah, with PFL and the kit, that's another good thing that I just want to touch on before we delve into it is... Guys, welcome to another episode of Jibber with Jabba. Today, I am joined by the monster, Brendan Lochlein. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Pleasure. About well, time we got it done, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, we planned this about nine years ago, so yeah. I think it's like taking it's just taken a while, right? Yeah, we got there in the end, <laughs> yeah. though. Man, welcome back to Dubai. Yep. And one thing I wanted to ask you, um, I've started to notice that a lot of the fighters are coming to Dubai. And I don't know whether it's a, a weather thing or wh why do you come and train here in Dubai because that's where we first met we met in in the gym while you were there and I remember like the first day that I saw you you were doing your usual training and I was just like that guy's on a mission <laughs> he's, he's on a mission mate. He's, I didn't see you rest for like three hours yeah I think uh well it's a funny story because I wasn't intentionally planning on coming here and staying here it was my mate stag do no way and that's what brought you out and uh 52 of us came out here in just before covid and um we came out went to the five <laughs> yeah as you do right when as you come you, out come here, on yeah, lad yeah. and then i'd never been dubai never had no intention of coming to dubai either it was not even on my list of places to go and um landed did five days in there and then i'd always seen my mate had been to tk mma and i just thought it looked really cool mm. so i thought Day five came around and you know when you're just not ready to go home? I was like, I'm not ready to go home yet. Extended a uh, couple more days, couple more days turned into a few weeks yeah. and then months and as it does and yeah. here we are today. I just, uh, every time I leave here, I want to come back. Yeah. I've got that feeling now. So yeah, I'm buzzing. It's crazy. There's a lot of people who say, I'm going to move to Dubai, stay for a year, save some money and go back. And then eight years later, <laughs> I'm like, you're not planning to go back yet <laughs> kind of I thing. mean why would you want to yeah. mate it's got everything on your doorstep even the training like you said is is really picking up now the fighters are all coming mm. here um, some for tax reasons yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> some for fight we're reasons. not going to drop any names yeah. But yeah. some for sun reasons you know there's loads of reasons but this is uh, it feels like home now mm. it does it, it, does. Can, it can do that really quickly, right? Like, before you know it, you're just like, no, nah, I'm really comfy here. <laughs> That's like really cool. I've been to a lot of places in the world, fought in a lot of countries and been all over the place. And something here felt like home. I don't know what it is. Yeah. And even when I went back to Manchester, I'm still looking at Skyscanner and going, I want to go home. Even yeah, though yeah. Manchester's where I lived my whole life. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm buzzing, mate. I've, since I landed back, I've just, just been like doing the rounds, you know, even the sunsets. It's, everything's just different in Dubai, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Is it what you expected? Like when, when your mate was the first like, let's go to Dubai, was it one of those you just thought it was going to be like, ah, and then a desert in the background, a camel just chewing a bit of grass, and then, a, you know, just the cliche. Literally, that's yeah, yeah. all you hear. It's horror yeah, stories yeah, back yeah. in the UK of, wow, if you do anything at all, yeah, you're getting yeah. a thousand lashes and a thousand years in prison. Yeah. And you're like, wow, don't want to ever go there. What a big misconception that is. It's crazy, right? And like, I'm so glad that I, uh, I actually didn't listen to anybody and just went with my gut to come here. I didn't really have a choice. He forced me. He's yeah, like, listen, exactly. if you're going to be my mate, you're going to have to come. Um, and I'm glad that he did because it really opened my eyes after being here for five days. It just wasn't enough. Then five weeks weren't enough. Five months weren't enough. And then yeah. I was like, you know what? This is the place for me. Yeah, it's amazing. Because I, I remember one of my friends was coming out here and she was like, oh, I'm going to have really weird tan lines having to wear a full body bikini and all that <laughs> stuff. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> there's people in G-strings on the Literally beach here. Normal. Like, there's people in booty riders in the mall. It's normal. Like, there's a certain couple of set of rules which are just like, mate, 
don't do drugs. Yeah. Don't do this. This is the three or four that are major. Yeah. But everything else is just chilled. Man. I remember like, like that story on the news where about five, no, nah, it must have been 10 years ago now where someone kissed someone on the beach and got, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was all we knew about Dubai. Yeah, exactly. I was like, fuck that. Up. Yeah, but you know what? I think it wasn't that. I think they were doing a bit more than kissing on the beach. <laughs> and to be honest, no, no, because it changes you because I remember, because I grew up in London and it would be, let's just say 18 degrees and I'd have my tits out in Tesco's yeah. mate. Yeah. Like, I'd literally be walking yeah. through the aisles, literally. topless. And then after living here for a while, when I went back on holiday, I was just like, have some class, mate. Like, you don't need to be topless. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, because here, you don't see people walking around in the street topless unless they're at the beach or the, the whatever. And it kind of made me change my way of thinking. I was like, yeah, you're kind of right. I don't need to be just walking around topless everywhere. It doesn't make sense. Well, here, I mean, like you said, I don't like the fact that when I first come, it was two years ago now when I first came, it is changing. It's getting a bit more west every time I yeah, come, yeah. and I'm not. I don't like that in yeah, a way. Yeah, yeah. I want to preserve what I first felt when yeah, I got here, and yeah. I feel now like, oh, we're in Manchester now. Then. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I it, totally agree with all of that, man. So it's like there's new things changing. Like for example, before, the work week. Yeah, and before you couldn't live with a girl, or you couldn't, yeah. you know, do any of that. Now all these guys are worried because you can do whatever you want and like, trapped. Bro. The, the proper change, everything yeah, yeah. to 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 accommodate the west, and I'm like, yeah. no. Don't, yeah, the weekends as well. I used to like having Friday and Saturday did. off. Yeah, yeah. I used to be love getting one step ahead and the Sundays are Monday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm on the ball. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I'm on the ball from Sunday. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, they had to really because it was that many here. Yeah, People yeah. like, listen, we've got multi-billion pound companies. Yeah. You better change the work week or we're getting off. Yeah, but let's just hope they don't follow the taxes and all that madness, bro, because... It's nice not paying anything right now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they don't want me getting off as well. <laughs> yeah, start exactly, doing all that. Exactly. So let's talk about your your upbringing and in, in, in Manchester itself. I mean, it's not the safest place. So I can see how it would have bred a monster. Yeah. Um, why does somebody become a fighter? Uh, fucking good question. I just want good enough at football. Yeah. And that's literally the truth. Like... Played football for years, got to a decent level, county level, was captain of the school team, etc., etc. all that. And then um, just like got to like 14, 15, 16, it was getting really competitive as it is in England. Yeah, yeah. And um, got a couple of friends now that did make it, Rashford, Lingard, we all grew yeah. up together, um, Ravel. And I just wasn't them. And it got to the point where I started doing MMA when it first came out. I've been in this sport for 16 years now, and like, it was just like a DVD. Oh, it wasn't even a DVD, it was a VHS at the time. You'd put in and watch Pride yeah, yeah. from Japan, yeah. and your mate would get it and go, oh, yeah, I've got this, and then you'd watch it, and that's how it kind of how it started. And then I started doing it, and then I had to make a life decision, like, are you good enough at football? Do you want to crack on with this? This is something new. There was no real, you wasn't going anywhere with it, because mm. there was no like, oh, if you do this, you'll get to there. Because there was no like progression steps like football, your academy. Oh, you can kick a ball back, you're in the academy. You mm. get everything looked like, your bills are paid. Yeah, and yeah. that's and it. You, you're set for the rest Dude, of your life. I have the same upbringing as you, bro. I was playing football as well. Yeah. Um, but the thing I want to, let's bring that mic down just a little bit and a bit yeah, yeah. closer to you. A bit closer. Yeah, there we go. The thing that I want to, thing is, you could have done anything from football. Where do you go from, <laughs> okay, I might not make it back from football, so I'm going to get punched in the face for the next 19 years? Like, where's that? Because, look, a lot of people like to train. Yeah, they like. I like to do jujitsu. I like to, to you know, do sparring. I like to do that stuff. Mm. But I don't want it enough or like it enough to be like, this is going to be my life. Like I'm gonna get punched in the face as my career. I mean, yeah. Where's that switch inside that it, goes? I think it definitely is something you're born with. It must be. Mm. Like I've tried to pinpoint so many times. My mum doesn't do anything. My dad doesn't do anything. My cousins, nobody's athletic, nobody eats healthy. Yeah. Just come from a standard Manchester household where everyone just works and, and does that. So it's not even like I can go, yeah, but my uncle or... Yeah, my uncle used to Nah, do. nobody. Like, my next door neighbour used to do it. And then I used to come home from school and I used to go to his fights and all that. And then he had a bit of respect in the neighbourhood. He had a nice okay. car. And I thought, maybe if I start doing a bit... Yeah. That must be it then for other people's respect. So it's like, hold mm. on, if these guys know that I'm doing this, I'm safe. They're not going to fuck with me because they, they're going to think twice maybe before doing it. Yeah. But not only that, I then took it to a whole new level and did it more than anybody. Yeah, yeah. So there is something more than that. Like, that's okay to get to a point where people won't touch you and yeah. never want to leave you alone in the area. But then I had something else yeah. where I was like, I'm going all the way. 
is it that you wanted to be the best or is it because like for example good friend of ours bam bam when he was on the show he was like bro i just did it for money that's all i was interested in i wanted to make money and this was the quickest clearest path to make money other than selling drugs or doing mm. whatever the legal way so because some fighters are like i don't care about the money i want to be the best fighter in the world i don't care about the money and i don't care in particular about being the best fighter in the world every time you throw a name at me i just think fuck that he's not beating me yeah and it's one guy at a time and people go like to me what is it and i i if i knew i yeah. would tell you what it is yeah but it's something that's deep in your G, in your dna and it's something that i'm like every time a name comes across the table i'm like right that's just a fresh challenge and that's how it's been for me if, it's not like i want to be the ufc champion i want to that was never the goal it was like oh Dave wants to fight you. Oh, does he? All right. Yeah. How long? Six weeks. <laughs> have won, yeah. James wants to. Oh, does he? And it's just gone from that for next thing. I'm looking at my watch and 16 years has gone. Wow. It just flew by, right? Just been in it for so long. I was just born and bred into this sport. I've watched it grow from something that's been frowned upon. And ooh, you do that too. Yeah. Glo like you, you're, you're better than a footballer. I'm in clubs in Manchester. More yeah. people talk to me than the footballers. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, it's gone full circle. It's mad. But this is the one thing I wanted to <coughs> kind of, talk to you about because a lot of fighters came in before with a style or before MMA became MMA right you'd have boxers you'd, you'd have kickboxers you'd have jiu-jitsu guys you'd have when you started it was MMA already do you feel like that gave you an advantage because you didn't have to learn the new stuff over your own first style if you, does that make any that's, sense that's a great point and I was the first hybrid MMA fighter. Everybody else was a karate, they were a kickboxer, they were jiu-jitsu, they were wrestling. I walked in an MMA gym and they were like, you have to learn this, 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 and this. I went, okay. And I did it all together in a hybrid and I was 16. Yeah. So imagine I learned at the beginning and now I watch kids at nine, 10 years yeah. of age doing flying arm bars, mate. And I'm like, well, you don't know you're born. Yeah. Well, I had to go through to be yeah, able yeah. to find adequate training to be able to do any of that. Yeah. It's turned into football. Oh, he looks like he can do a good spinning up kick. Get him, nurse him. And it's it's gone like that now. It's The sport's got that big and it's good to see. Because mm. it's like, you kind of had an advantage because you were kind of given all the tools at the same time, right? Where other people were kind of like, they had to adapt their own style yeah. and get it. Do you feel like, do you ever get that regret like, oh, I wish I started when I was 10 or I wish I started when I was No, because it wasn't even a sport. Yeah. When you I should have bloody invented it instead nah, of pissing listen, about playing football, mate. I, That's I, why. I, I'm talking about when I did it, yeah. I think Chuck Liddell might have, I can't remember what UFC it was, but Pride was still about like 2008 was my first fight. I started watching MMA in 2005. I mean, I don't know when it started, but it wasn't much before yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah. like, yeah, I mean, I remember coming home from school a few times. I've seen all the lads going into the karate school and stuff near my house. I used to think, fucking, I would love to do that. And there's a couple of pictures that my mum's pulled out of the attic where I'm running around the house with boxing gloves on. And there's one in particular that I'm going to give you because I want you to mm. post it on this, where I must have been fucking hell, six, five, six years old. And I'm stood there like this. And my mum took the picture. I had Lego pants on and these boxing gloves <laughs> that she bought me for Christmas. And the thing that fascinates me, mate, it's the stance. Yeah, it's that you perfect. Were, it was, no, yeah, it was like, like naturally. I look at yeah. it and it was the balance, yeah, the yeah. way the hands were, were positioned. That's why when I say you born, there, you yeah. must be, because yeah. no one showed me anything. And I'm like, how did I know how to stand like that? Here's a question: Do you have to wear the green PFL shorts in every fight? Yeah. So there's no way for this next fight you can wear Lego pants just as an homage, <laughs> as an homage to the young Brandon. Is there no way you can get the one there? So what it is with PFL? Wear them under. When you it, win, take the other yeah, ones the off. Yeah, the Lego pants. On pants on. I love yeah. them Lego yeah. pants, mate. <laughs> it's the stand for me though, but I can't wait to post it. Um, but yeah, with PFL and the kit, that's another good thing that I just want to touch on before we delve into it. Is shout out to a PFL man. Yeah, like when the out. UFC pulled everything away, they came in and they come in with you can have two of your own sponsors. You know, you can do anything outside the season. So the season runs from May all the way through to November. Outside of that, oh, you want to box? Mm. You want to do anything else? You just go away, but make sure you're fresh and healthy and ready for us. Yeah. Come on, mate. Like, they give you so much freedom. Yeah. And them two spots that you're selling, 
That could be yeah. your money for your rent for the year or... Dude, those two spots that you're selling could be more than the salary of a UFC fighter is getting for his fight. Scary, isn't it? Like, I mean, I want, I, we want to get into that. Yeah. But before that, I want to... How long did it take you to get... No, let's go back before that. Did you fight a lot before you started learning how to fight? I was always that right back that would fly into the challenges, yeah. mate. Like, but I'm, no, no, but I mean fighting. I mean, straight up street fighting with other kids or anything like that. I mean, I was, like I say, I was that kid that was flying into challenges. And if it was going off on the pitch, I was in there. there yeah. I was that kid who was fucking thrown over and out of the way, but yeah, I was yeah. the smallest. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm still not big now. Um, and if my mates would ever get into any bother, I was always there. But to say that I was like the gym, like going around the school trying to fight people, no, yeah. I wasn't. I really so when wasn't. You, when you had your first fight, your first real fight, how did you feel then when it became a reality and you were like, okay. MMA is, or yeah, uh, MMA, street fight? MMA. MMA, I'd been training for about eight months and I was only training twice a week on a Tuesday and a Thursday. And I was just doing my own bits and bobs outside of that. And I remember coming to the gym one day and I'd been, yeah, eight months in at what, two hours, four hours a week. I was doing two on a Tuesday, two on a Thursday. And the guy goes, I've got you a fight. And I went, I obviously I didn't want to let him down. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you're like, you're fighting in six weeks or four weeks, whatever it was. You're fighting, uh, I've got you, I've sorted it with the promoter. I remember going home and thinking, what does he mean? I've got a fight. Yeah, yeah. I ain't ready for no fight. Well, he obviously seen some of me yeah, that I he, didn't. He knew, yeah. He knew. Um, and then shout out to Danny Ram, mate, because he put it on my toes big time. I didn't want to do it. Still to this day, contracts come over, I'm like, fucking, I'm doing it again. Yeah, yeah. Stats not gone away. Yeah. That's still that anxiety of a fight. And the fact that they give you so long to think about it, yeah, eight yeah, to right. ten yeah, weeks yeah, to, to fucking, prepare. You it's think like counting down the days when someone's going to punch me in the face. Couldn't I just walk around the corner and get it over <laughs> yeah, with? Yeah, yeah. It's like, you, you know, the bully at school when he's like, after school, we're going to fight. And you're just like, oh, for fuck's sake. And then that school day feels so long. And you're like, oh, I've got to prepare for this fight. Imagine now. that's yeah, been yeah. my whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> over and over and over again. One right? after another, another monster after another monster yeah. after another monster and the way pfl structure there's mate every yeah. six weeks fighting it's brutal yeah no, no no i want to talk about that because that's nuts did you did you win your first fight one or three in a row this year yeah no no, no your first ever fight oh sorry yeah, fight. yeah 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 yeah. oh yeah. yeah yeah knocked him out um come in swinging for the fences didn't <laughs> know what was going on this kid was two and old as well so i was like oh god he knows what he's doing and he tried to put me in a leg lock i just fucking flung him <laughs> off and then yeah knocked the guy out um nice. but it wasn't the first one i was scared of it was the second one because the second one, in my head, it was 100% a fluke, that first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then they go, you've got this Ben Rolls. He's free and all. He's got three knockouts. And I'm thinking, why are they giving me these guys? Yeah, yeah. Like, it was a fluke. In yeah. my head, it was a fluke. You're like, you're lucky I turned up to the last one. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But I've got a funny story. You'll love this. So it gets like the night before the fight. I'm driving to Nottingham for this fight the next day. So I'm sat in my mum's house, yeah. I'm like, 16 years old, 17 years old. I'm like, right, I've got to fight this guy tomorrow. I'm like, right, I'm going to get my head down. Can't sleep, obviously, because yeah. I'm that f nervous. Then I remember it got to about five in the morning. I'm still awake, mate. I took loads of sleepers. <laughs> right, listen. And then I still didn't sleep. And then he picked me up there at nine in the morning to drive yeah. to Nottingham. I'm like, fucking hell, full yeah. of sleepers. I'm sat in this car like that, nodding yeah. off. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, <laughs> fuck, get to this fucking sports centre. Starts warming up, felt terrible hitting the pad. I'm like, well, they're like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Anyway, it came out. That was still probably to stay the best forms of my life. I was that scared. No I just way. ran through him, flying, <laughs> need him, knocked him, cry. I was like, that scared that I just ran through him. Yeah, yeah. He's mad. And the funniest thing is that your coaches was like, see, I told you he's ready. Look how relaxed he is in the car all the way up there. <laughs> you were just like, Kip him, mate. Imagine, not, not imagine the feeling of taking a load of sleepers, yeah, yeah. not sleeping, and then, and then to going fight. to a fight. Yeah. Torture, mate. But it yeah. prepared me for all this yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. that you know what I mean? We got to talk about the UFC because I think that played a big role in your in your career, right? And Dana, you fought in front of Dana and won. What was that situation like? How did it come about, and then what happens when? How do you feel when you're like, hold on, I'm I'm winning, but where's my contract? Well, if you if you rewind in 2012, I actually ended up on the Ultimate Fighter, so that was my first taste of the UFC. I was only five and out at the time. They called me onto this reality TV show. Um, I went on. The first guy I fought was uh, this guy called Patrick I. Dice. He was eight and zero. I was five and zero. Beat him comfortably, and I ended up in the semi-final. And I lost to the eventual winner, Norman Park. Um, he went on to do great things in the UFC. And then um, after that, I got my chance to fight on a UFC card. They were like, "Oh, Lord, this kid looks like he can do a bit." Then I fought on a card, UFC on FX6 in Australia. Fought, lost the decision 
A lot of people thought I won the decision. Anyway, life goes on. I rematched him three years later, knocked him out in the first round, the same guy. Nice. Um, and then anyway, fast forward, I got this, this contender shout. But forget the contender shout, mate. I was number one in Europe for six years, leading up to this contender shout. And then- Who were you fighting for in that time when you were? I was ACB, I was Bama, I was all the regional shows, but I was fighting good guys and beating good guys. And like watching like number six, number seven, number eight, number 11 get signed. And I was thinking, what the fuck's going on? And then they came with this do a contender, but guys on the contender just weren't good enough for me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I knew where I was at. I've already earned my stripes. Why am I doing contender? Why am I doing again? contender? Yeah. So that was my first thought, but I thought, fuck it, I'll take yeah. it. But then they, they gave me the hardest fight they could find. Yeah. They put all the odds in his favour. And I was like, all right, okay. And I just went in. He's in the UFC now. He's in the top 15. He's doing well. And I just ran through him. He's a one all three rounds, beat him up. And then, first of all, the whole world was like, why is this kid even on this show? And then it, that takedown thing at the end, uh, the last eight seconds, I shot him for a takedown. I was beating the guy comfortably. And as I was hitting him, it was just like, it was more of a Brits can wrestle too. I'm going to show yeah. you that I'm a full round because I batted him on the feet. So then I'm thinking, I'm going to show him my wrestling too. So I took him down at the end. I'm thinking, buzzing, smashed it here. Dominic Cruz is in my corner. Everybody else is like, yeah, yeah, you're in. Done deal. And then they sit me in front of a studio like this. And I'm basically been told, you're about to get a UFC contract. Everything mm. you've always worked for your whole life. So I'm sat waiting like this, mm. buzzing. Then he comes up on a screen like that. And I've never met Dana. I've only seen him on this screen now and then just at my fight. Okay. What you don't do is you don't come here, you don't fight like that, and guess what? You're not getting a contract. And I was just sat there, mate, and it was like, wow, my but whole why you don't do what the takedowns. <laughs> have you not seen it? Have you not seen the clip? No. All right, you have to watch it. He yeah, made up some excuse it. in the last eight seconds because I took the guy down and said, I don't know. There was there was I don't know what was going on that night. It was one of them nights. Um, and then, yeah, just imagine I was sat there and it's like my whole world had just ended. Everything was over in my head. My whole life was wow. over. And I'm sat in this thing. And then I was just like looking around, like, can I leave now then? And yeah. then just like kind of walked out the UFC apex and that was that. Was that. And that was it. <clears throat> but onto better things, right? Well, then PFL called me with an offer I couldn't refuse. Yeah. Tournament format, chance to be a millionaire. I went, look, we watched you on that show. We want you bad. Yeah. And then uh, I signed with a manager at the time, who I'm still with now, Malky Kawa. And uh, he got me paid and he's been continuing to get me paid. And I've been putting on world-class performances all over the world. I'm seven and one in the PFL now. Um, and I'm about to fight for a world title and a million dollars. Yeah, let's go Let's go back before <laughs> that. Because I want to I wanna clarify a few things because <clears throat> there might be people who don't know fully about the PFL now properly. Mm. Um, obviously, they just come onto Channel 4, right? Which, mm -hmm. is, which is amazing, right? I know, it just massive. gave you so much more... Um, eyes, but I mean they got different rules there as well. Like I heard you can't elbow in the PFL. Is that true? That's the only rule. That's the only rule. Only <laughs> rule <like> difference. <laughs> bite them, but don't. Elbow. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. they took away elbows, and that's due to a tournament format. Because like I touched on before, you fight every six weeks. Another thing. How, explain the whole thing behind it, because it's basically you know the it's levels. A Champions League. Yeah, yeah, it's a Champions League, but for fighters. Yeah. Now UFC isn't like that. You'll have a fight, and then you might have another one. Whatever you don't fight six times a year exactly. or seven times a year. So, how did you feel with that initially? Because it's not just it's like yeah, we're going to give you money, but we're going to batter you for like you know the whole year. We're going to put you through it, and that takes a toll on your body, dude, and your mind. Yeah, like my first season with PFL was fucking hell. Like I can't explain how bad it was. Like I, I literally I signed up for it and I thought fuck it, I love fighting. I'll mm. fight all the time. I don't care every six weeks. And then first season, I got this first fight with Shaman Marais. Everyone thought he was going to win. Just come out of the UFC, fought as a beat, fought all the top guys in there, start jumping around. I'm on top of the world. Then they said, COVID is apparent in the world right now. So you cannot leave the United States because if you leave and you can't get back in, wow. that's on you and you're out the tournament. So I'm not from the US. I'm yeah, yeah. finding random gyms to train at in the US. And I've been told I can't go for a year while this yeah. tournament's on. So I'm like couch, um, couch surfing and yeah. living at people's houses and like trying to find my way in a random country that I don't have yeah. any position to like train in. So anyway, I do that. 
get through. Then my second fight, I have an absolute war like you wouldn't believe, mate. Like tooth and nail, hardest fight I've ever been in. Broke my hand in the first round, and then had after the fight. Imagine having a broken hand, and they go, "You're fighting again in six weeks." In six weeks, and yeah. I'm like, and it takes four and a half weeks for it to heal. Scars, like, yeah, scars. Yeah. I had scars all over me, and then you've got this 19 and old Dagestani mob lead in the yeah. final, in the semi-final. Again, I can't have my team with me. I'm in the States. I had hand surgery, two plates put in my hand, and fought that guy, mate. Wow. With, they told me I couldn't even punch a bag for three months, and I just turned it round. I was like, I'll never forgive myself if I don't roll the dice yeah, and yeah. try. And I'm so glad that I did for myself. And then now I'm in a fresh season. Mm. I learned a lot about myself, about MMA, about tournaments, about weight cutting, about injuries. And I'm just so happy to be here now in the final and healthy. Yeah. What do you think the most important thing that you learned this season is? Last season or this one? This one. Staying healthy is everything. I got bad staff infections, I had a broken hand, I had cuts all over me and then like, I just wasn't taking care of myself, I wasn't resting, I was just going all year thinking that, imagine just having a race car and just leaving it on, yeah, yeah. on your foot on the gas, that's what I tried to do for and a year. And also America, it's not like you've got NHS where you can go do it all for free. Exactly, exactly, yeah. it was It was hard, it was... You have it to was, look at the cut and go, it, it was mentally How the hardest thing. How much should I pay thing. for this? Is it worth letting it heal just by itself you or going I mean? and getting it stitched? And yeah, and Rory McDonald just retired. Kayla Harrison just said it's the hardest thing. She did all these like Anthony Pettis of all, Auburn Mercier, all UFC veterans have all said, listen, this is the fucking hardest thing on planet Earth. And I'm not going to lie, mate. Once I finished last year, I was literally like looking at my phone, like how long is it till next season? Because I was that scared of starting it all again because yeah. it's that hard on your... That's crazy. Okay, let's talk about this season. Your last fight was sick, bro. Like, it's weird when you're watching people you've met fight. It's a different kind of feeling. Like, like we'll know when Bam's fighting, you know, this weekend. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm nervous, but at the same time, I'm like, it's Bam, he's got this kind of thing. Yeah. So I remember watching your fight and just for the whole thing, I w like, you're attached to the person, right? So it's like, you just want them to do well. But there was no doubt in that fight, bro. Like, your last fight was a school. Nah, but the, the thing is, though, was, though, because I just had two shit performances. I barely got through my first two fights of the season. Again, injuries. And it was like, it come to Chris Wade now. Yeah. And we had a, a heated build-up. Like, heated. Like, they made us sit down at the Sun newspaper, do a face-to-face. -face. It was all this press. And he was just sat there going, lad, I'm going to run through you. This yeah. is what he's saying. I'm just going to run through you. I went five and two in the UFC. I've done four seasons of PFL. I've been in the final four times. You just, I'm just going to run through you. So after my first two performances and the injuries that I went through, I'm thinking, fucking hell, he probably could. But mm. imagine adding that on top of being in London, 6,000 of my own people. Then all the shit talk we've done leading up to it and all the pressure of everything like this, the semis now. If you lose again, where are you going from here? All that combination of shit I thought are you really strong enough to go and put on a performance of your life against this guy because that's what it's going to take to beat him because he is mm -hmm. very experienced he's only lost to Islam Makachev Rustam Habilov he's lost to Russians that's it yeah. so I'm thinking fucking I know how good this guy is and just went in and wiped the floor with him yeah, mate. Yeah. and to me that was worth more than getting in the final it was worth more than the paycheck I got for it it was for my own personal yeah. satisfaction because I didn't know if I could do that anymore yeah. So for and me, when I come out of it, as well. oh, bro, three to one underdog, all of all the panelists said he's just going to walk through Brendan and to be able to do it, such a satisfaction to myself. And in such a way as well, because it was like, all right, you, you want punches? I'll give you punches. You want kicks? Yeah, I'll give you kicks. And I walk around and you want to go like, it was just like very, it didn't seem like, like the story you're telling now <laughs> doesn't match the performance that you gave. Do you know what I mean? Well, they say diamonds are made under pressure, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And all that doubt, like I'm warming up thinking, fucking hell, I could hear the crowd, the doors opening, flapping, and you can hear it, and then they put a screen in the back while you're warming up, and I'm just looking at all my people on this screen. Yeah, yeah. And you're thinking, on the other side of that door, me and them are going to fight for 15 minutes, yeah. and you're putting everything on the line, you're so vulnerable, mate, you're going out in a little pair of shorts, and you're going out in front of millions yeah, of people. They're not exactly Lego pants, are they? Exactly. They're not your you're super weapon, right? Like this, mate. <laughs> yeah. And uh, millions of people are watching it. You built it up to be this big thing. You're telling him you're going to smash his head in, but really, he could smash your head in. And it, everything's on the line. Everything you've ever worked for is in that 15 minutes. And if you don't perform, you're going home. And who knows where your career goes from there? And that's what was going through my head, mate. And 
to be able to perform like that, I mean, it's been a week now, but I'm still buzzing with myself, mate. Yeah, yeah. I really am. But do you feel like because it was the semi-final, it wouldn't have taken that much of a toll on your career as much as it was if you lost the first <clears throat> or second fight. Do you know what I mean? Then it's like, where do you go from there? You didn't even make it anywhere near the quarters <laughs> or anything, right? And that's happened getting, to a lot. Yeah. So getting to the semis, it's at least, you know, like, oh, no, no, he still made it. To towards the end, so let's see next year whether he does Bro, it. Bro, that's happened to a lot. Anthony Pettis got signed, can't get to the finals. Like Roy McDonald got signed, can't get to the finals. They're, they're bringing in major talent from around the world who can't even get past the semis, mate. Can't even get to the semis. That happens when you because you know when different players go to different teams. Yeah, yeah. Like that, you know, somebody will go to Arsenal, but you don't realize the pitch is a lot narrower and the passing's different and they play different. It's like. I feel it's like that. Like some people go to Brave or they go to one, mm. thinking, "Yeah, I've been in the UFC," but they get there and it's a bunch of killers out there, that and they just can't get. You know, I mean, it happened with Mighty Mouse. Now, yeah. Mighty Mouse is one I think is one of the best fighters of all time. Yeah, agreed. Now, when he went there and lost, everyone was like, "Hold on, what's happening here?" Like, uh, that wasn't these, supposed to happen. Yeah, are these guys better than we thought, or did yeah. he have a bad fight, or or whatever? So I can kind of understand how they'll come in with because a lot of people think that the UFC has the best fighters, but it really doesn't. I mean, it does to a certain extent. It does, but there's a lot of killers in a lot of these there other is. things that maybe a similar situation like you has happened where they didn't get that contract for one reason or another, but it doesn't mean that they're not good enough to be there. So, Well, that's true. I mean, that guy who I beat that night is now in the top 15 in the UFC and he, he didn't win a round. Yeah. So, I mean, I just ran through him. I mean, I'm 25 and four as a pro. It's, it's like... There's not many people with that record either. Yeah. I've got four losses. They're all close decisions. I've never been stopped. You know what I mean? I've never been in massive danger in a fight. Like I've been here and there, but like mm. I'm a world-class fighter and I know I am. Do you know what I mean? I've sparred UFC champions mm. regular mm. and I know where I'm at and they know where I'm at. And it's like, for me, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air that I get paid my worth at PFL. Because mm. if I did get signed that night, I would be on... You probably maybe still wouldn't a have made quarter, enough. Yeah. Maybe a quarter of what I'm on now. Think about that. Yeah. Maybe a quarter. So it's like God was saying, listen, I'm going to do you a bit of a favour here, mate. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put you in that direction. Although you might think it's the worst time of your life right now, yeah. something better is on the other side of this. And I remember Dominic Cruz saying it to me after the fight. He went, this is the best thing that could have ever happened. So I said, what do you mean? He went, yeah. you're more known than ever now. Everyone watched the fight. Everyone knows the decision was wrong. Mm. And now the paychecks are coming out everywhere because yeah. everyone wants you now. And he was right, and it did, and it, it did turn out to be the best thing that ever happened to me. And they can't even put sponsors on their shorts or anything on the UFC, can they? Um, no, 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 no. They're completely. I think it was quite funny because they were like in the beginning, we don't want to make, make it, you know, distract everything with all these sponsors, and then they went and put yeah, it all right. over the ring and yeah, all right. over everywhere. And it's like, well, funny how the sponsors that, that are coming to you <laughs> is okay, but just not the short. And I think that's really important, and that's a really big deal that the PFL has done is you should be able to make some money off sponsors and choose the sponsors that you want to represent as well. Well, listen, they used to do that. Like there was banners. Yeah. Um, uh, they used to Mighty tattoo, Mouse. they used to not tattoo, um, yeah. paint the sponsors yeah, exactly. on people's backs and stuff. Mighty Mouse was sponsored by Xbox. John yeah. Jones was sponsored by Nike. How can you take that away from these yeah. people? For what? Like It's like taking Puma away from the same boat. Do you know what I mean? For what though? Just so you can put whatever you want on them. And yeah. it's like, I'm not going to shit on the UFC yet yeah, because it was my dream for a long time. And I went on the contender that night because that was my dream and that's what yeah. I wanted to do. But when you actually sit outside the box like yourself and you're not fighting and you go, hang on a minute, these it's guys are allowed right. these two spots. And like you say, for them two spots now, I'm in the championship. Imagine what I can sell them for. Yeah. And the amount of people that are going to watch this fight and I can go, well, I want X amount. And that could be more than the purse I would have got anyway, exactly. which it will be yeah, yeah. for each spot. I mean, I'm just saying, uh, have you sold them yet? I've got one left. Because Jibber with Jabber could be... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, they don't pay much. <laughs> Wait, let me rephrase that. They don't pay anything. anything yeah. But they're a really nice logo yeah, to a good have lad. on your shorts. Yeah, it's yeah, a, it's a really lad. nice logo, you know. Um, no, yeah, I, I, I just totally agree with you. I just think... My problem with the with the UFC, and I say my problem like anyone cares about my my opinion, is that it's got it's it's different when it's football, it's different when it's running. But I think fighters deserve more because of the risks that they're taking mm -hmm. and because of what they're putting themselves through. There are look at um, 
what's his name? English guy. Why am I forgetting his name? English UFC champion. Bisping. Bisping. One eye. One eye, dude. The guy, you know, the guy faked an eye test before his fight. Oh, no, all about still won. that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like something, like he had to fake being able to see. Like he couldn't see from one side where the punches were coming. Well, do you know what? But that's the levels they got to go to just to make that money. It's funny you mention that. And, you know, shout out to Mike Bisping. I'm going to tell you a little story about that because... I was like debating what to do with the PFL and the contract that they put in front of me and all that. And I did ask Mike, we was out together, and I said, what do you think? And he went, he whipped his eye out and he literally looked at me and went, take the money. Yeah. Take the money while it's there, bro, look. And he, I was like, wow, what yeah. a moment that was. Yeah. Coming from a pioneer of UK MMA to tell me, lad, look at me, yeah. follow the money. And that was probably one of the best advice I've ever had in my career. And it was right, follow the money. Mm -hmm. Like we are prize fighters yeah. and everyone forgets that they yeah. think yeah but so what i'll just take these this bird food here to fight this guy and but then you lower the market for everyone yeah yeah and then like one guy does it then they all follow and everyone accepts it and then 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 they think well we don't have to make any changes because none of these guys are complaining kind of thing it takes you know it's one in ganu or one you know it it's all right when you're the ufc champion mm -hmm. and you're fighting and you're getting those big bucks it's all right when you're a Conor McGregor who, who is entertaining to the point that they're making money off him even if he's not fighting. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just from, you know, pay-per-views and stuff like that. But it's like, what about the rest of them? They're putting their lives on the line, dude. There's CTE. There's, you know, recovery. There's fam being away from your family. for so People got kids and stuff and they're not seeing them because they're training all the time and then they're fighting. Then they're coming back looking like, who's this? Like, what's wrong with dad's face? And it's like there should be a level of appreciation and respect there that you'd be like, no, no, you do. Because it's not like they only make a bit, so they they give you a percentage of that little bit because they still need to... They make <laughs> more than enough. More than enough from one... Uf this UFC event they're going to do on Saturday, they're going to make enough to have paid all the fighters for the year a decent amount of money. I mean... I don't know if you want to answer or not, but, you know... It's like... I don't really want to get into the UFC and the fighters pay thing because they, they get a lot of stick. But I also do know a lot of people get checks in the post. Hmm. A lot of people get checks in the post from the UFC that people don't know about. Okay. And I'm talking million dollar checks, mate. Really? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Andy Pettis come out recently <coughs> on Ariel and said he fought Ben Anderson for the title. I think his purse might have been. I don't know, 100 and 100, 200, but he said, I got a million dollar check in the post wow. that nobody knows about. So the, that goes on too. So okay. we can't just- Well, look, it's good that I brought it up because you don't yeah. know that side of it. So yeah. now you do know that side of it. So there is there is yeah. other things that we don't know about and a lot of, they call them locker room bonuses. Yeah, yeah. And that happens, but that only happens to guys who are favored and that yeah. are exciting and leave it all out there. So it's like any sport, you could be a Man United player, but then there's the Man United yeah, yeah, player. Yeah. And that's basically and what Ronaldo, it is. You yeah, know what I mean? do you know what I mean? Yeah from shirt sales and all that. That's, yeah. Do you think <clears throat> other fighters look at you and think the same shit that you're thinking? And you're both sitting there going, oh, for fuck's sake, I've got to fight this guy. But you got to put on that brave, like, like, like the story you were saying about your last fight, where you were like, oh, you know, in doubt. Do you know what it is? Do you think everyone goes through that? I'm just very honest. Yeah, yeah. A lot of these fighters, I don't get scared. I don't give a fuck. I don't believe that's true for a second, bro. You have to have it. Yeah, Mike Tyson said it. <laughs> Nervous before. This is Mike Tyson, and he said he was shitting it before every fight. Didn't look it, and didn't sound like it, but fear is a good thing. Like, fear stops you from <laughs> being complacent and stuff, right? Bro, every single time, an hour before the fight, I literally think, what the fuck am I doing this for again? Yeah. Every time. No matter how, even if it's an opponent that I know that I'm going to have a good chance against, or if it's a 50-50 fight, I get the same feeling. I'm like sat there and, then, you know, I'm putting my shorts on for the fight. Oh, everyone's warming up. I'm thinking, fucking hell, still doing this. Yeah. And it's the same feeling I had when I was 16 years old to now, mm. 32. Yeah. Like, like it's, it, and anyone that says they don't go through that, I'm looking at everyone's faces in these changing rooms. Yes, everyone's going <laughs> through the same thing. They got that, you know, you know that what I compare it to? There. You watch the film Gladiator? Yeah, of course. When you're there and they put you in and you're outside, you can hear the roar of the crowd and you know, like, they're fighting lions different. Yeah, yeah. They're fighting lions, mate. But I, what? Well, so are your opponents. And so they're like, right, they sit them all in yeah. this thing and then they have a metal gate that they yeah. open. They're all looking at each other like this. 
there's no difference to what we're doing. We're just, yeah. there's thousands of people in this Coliseum outside. They just want to be entertained. Mm. They don't care about who you are. don't care about your family. Mm. They don't care about if you get out of that alive. Mm. In fact, they want more blood. That's what they want. They're, I think it's going back. They're thirsty, yeah. bro. Yeah. And we're just sat in this changing room like, next, next, yeah. next. And I just want to get out there, get it done and just yeah, get yeah, the fuck. That's literally what it's like. But the last <laughs> one was, was a bit different because it was a build up and... I thought, fucking hell, this one's actually personal, but I had such a good training camp leading up to it. That's where the confidence came from. And I actually enjoyed it in there. I was, yeah, everyone, you're yeah. And yeah. the crowd, it was a hometown crowd, not fought in UK for four years. And it was, that one was very, very, very special. The highlight of my career, the last mm. one, it really was. I feel like we're going back to those gladiator times because, look, it started with boxing. Then it went to MMA. Now they've got Ben. I've seen Ben Knuckle. Don't like it, bro. But have you seen it though? Of course I have. People come out of those fights look <laughs> like they just got run over by a car, mate. Like I feel like it's gonna keep going back till we're till you know those old days where you got the two hands tied together and a little blade, Promise. and they're like and people if we did that people would still pay per view. <laughs> of course for that. they would. They course would definitely they would. pay for pay per view. First, yeah, it's yeah. deep in our genetics. It really is yeah. from from the caveman days. Yeah. Like it's just in us as men, especially yeah. women like it too. Women like alphas. They like what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Women yeah. like alphas. Like Connor is an icon. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but men in particular, they want to see two guys, gladiators, yeah. go at it, and one guy get his hand raised. Yeah. And that's just inside us. And it was back in the day. It was that. Then it was Rome. Then it was gladiators, and it's moved along and along. Now they found cage fighting. They've even shaped it like yeah, yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And. I'm just that guy. I'm one of these Spartans that was out there. Yeah. That's what I would have been on the horse, yeah, yeah, with flying the around. That's on the just, chariot. I'm just, running a, around, right? I'm just, just in a, a different spear. era now. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. That's crazy. Would you, if you, you don't have kids now, right? No. Do you want kids? Yeah, of course I do. Would you want your son to fight? I mean, I get asked this a lot, and it's like I want my son to do martial arts because I think it gives you a great foundation for, sure. for, for life. For sure. As you know, you do jiu-jitsu yeah. yourself, but um, fighting, I don't know, that would be up to him or her. Um, that was that has to be a path that comes naturally. Yeah. You can, I wasn't forced into it and I found it, yeah. um, but the chances are they've got my genetics and yeah. my blood, they're gonna wanna do it. Just put some Lego pants on him, I'm bringing it back and see what happens. <laughs> if, he does that, if he does that straight away, then you know you'd be I'm like, I'm gonna yeah. check his stance out. Yeah, if yeah, it's yeah. all right, I'll go, okay, you yeah, can yeah. do a bit. But That's I'm not going to force him into nothing because it's a very hard life, mate. Yeah, yeah. I've been very fortunate. Um, but 99% of the people that I've trained with and fought with, I've stopped now. Yeah. And I'm just that lunatic that just won't let it go, yeah. Is it a lonely life? Yeah, very lonely. Incredibly Even lonely. Even though you have your team, you have your, you know, does it still feel like, oh, I'm kind of doing this alone? Like, when it really comes down to it, I'm the one walking out to the to the cage. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. I mean, I signed up to this. I knew what I was signing up to. Yeah. A lot of people moan about it. And I was like, listen, I'm signing up to be a gladiator yeah. until it's over. And that's going to mean no kids. I'm committing to having no kids. I'm committed to no stability, no home. I don't have a home. I yeah. just travel the world and fight. A lot of people don't do it like me. They will have a family and they will have the, the natural habitats and all that. But I'm like, nah, mate. My no life is going to revolve yeah. around this. Nothing is getting in my way. No woman's getting in my way. No children are getting in my way. No house, mortgage, all the, the struggles that people go through in life are not going to get in the way of what I'm doing. And I, I promised myself that in the beginning and I'll stick to it. Hmm. And with the with the season that's happening now, do you guys get paid before the final? I get paid for every fight. Yeah. For every fight. Is that the same for everyone who's in the season? Or? Everyone gets a, a okay. paycheck for every fight. Are they decent compared to the million? Or? Um incredible paychecks i am on crazy money like i actually compared it the other day i don't know how true that was what i've seen but i am on more than a ufc champion wow. a current ufc champion yeah I, I i don't know if that was a correct figure that i seen that he was on the flyweight champion yeah. but i was like wow how can they make less than me man yeah. what the fuck but pfl really look after me don't want to go into figures but They've yeah. changed my life, mate. They've changed my family's life. Yeah. And if it all ended today, I would be okay. That's amazing to hear, I know. bro. And it's it's what you it's what fighters deserve. Let's get that mic down again because yep. you change your whole position. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are you gonna do with a million when you win it? That's um, everyone asks me that, but 
My lawn might look like I've got nice things. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, but I'm it's not. A little kettle on there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not massively materialistic. It's only recently since I've had money. I've mm. been like, you know what? Let's make some investments. I've got properties. Um, you know, I've got a few little investments. And I love training martial arts, mate. If, like, if I could just wake up every day and train and not have to worry about real life mm. and not have to get a nine to five, that's enough for me. It's financial freedom. I don't want a massive gaff. I don't yeah. want a Bugatti. I don't yeah. want any of that. I just want to get up when I want, go to the gym, hit pads, do a bit of martial arts, maybe teach a bit and like raise my kids for after fighting yeah. and just like live and not have to drive the bus around and mm. be able just trying to survive. Do you know what I mean? I, I want to just have a nice comfortable living. Mm. What was your hardest fight? Hardest fight was probably uh, the second fight of last season um, was when I fought Tyler Diamond. Fought this American wrestler, all American, 12 and one. Um, and we just went to war, mate. That wasn't a fight, that was a war. Mm. And for anyone watching this that wants to watch a real fight, it's on YouTube. That guy took me and my soul to a place that I didn't know I could go. And after it, I look at him so different as a man now. Because when I look at him, I think, wow, you took me to a place that I didn't even know I had inside me. Mm. And uh, I took him to that same place. And we look each other in the eyes and I'm like, fuck, bro, we went somewhere else. Mm. We went into another galaxy we knew that yeah, night yeah. and it uh I was so like there's a, a famous if you go on and you put this in, it's Rory McDonald talking about when he fought Robbie Lawler. You've seen that fight, mm. right? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. That's my, my favourite fight yeah. of all time. Yeah. And then when Ariel's questioning him about it, he said, That was the greatest moment of my life and he was like, What do you mean? He went, You nearly died. He went, I know but how I felt. I'm getting mm. goosebumps now yeah, thinking yeah. about it because I'm feeling it how yeah. I felt in that fight. And it goes to a whole nother place that's outside reality because you're locked in a cage with another man that's willing to go to the bottom of his soul. And I go to the bottom of my soul and we end up in a very special place that mm. will never ever, nothing in life will ever come close to where we went. And then that's, that place there was the most special I've ever felt in a fight because it was the third round. I had nothing left, he had nothing left. And we're just fighting on, I don't know what mm. it was. And it was such a special feeling. It was mm. great. It was Most alive I've ever felt. Right? It's like once you get into that place, it's like you're not even thinking anymore. You're just like, your body's doing its own thing. Yeah, you just passed, you passed exhaustion. You mm. passed skill. You passed technique. You passed training camps. You passed, uh, you've gone past all that. You're in a place now where you're like, wow, what is this? Mm. Nothing works. It's like the Matrix is seen, right? When he's like, no. And all the bullets just stop. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in real life and day to day life, I'm having my coffee, I'm eating my new, I'm reading the news. I can't get there yeah, anywhere yeah. else. Yeah. It's only because another man is trying to take everything from me and I'm trying to take it from him. Yeah. And we ended up in a special place and they don't always go like that. And I've had a lot of fights, but that in particular sticks to my head. And the Jaguar who's here with us, he cornered yeah. me for that fight. And Shout even he said, the Jaguar. Yeah. he said it's the wildest thing he's ever seen. The energy in the building that night was different. And yeah, man, I'll take that one to the grave. Did you develop a special relationship with him after that fight where it was you had a different kind of friendship because you kind of both went to that kind of place? Yeah, exactly. I said that to him. Uh, like, my po I won the fight and my post-fight interview was turned to him and said, thank you so much for tonight. And he's like, like you just took me mm -hmm. to a place that I didn't even know existed inside yeah. me. He's like looking at me all crazy, but it did. It did. He just wouldn't get off me. just wouldn't let me go for 15 minutes. And I'd hit him with everything that I'd, I'd normally hit people with would go down and he yeah. wouldn't. And he was just there. And I was there and it was just crazy. And it's just that that was one that really stands out for me. Yeah. Who would be your dream fight? I mean, a lot of people ask me that, but I don't have one. No. Like, like I say, they ring me up and go, you're fighting this guy next. I'm like, still that same nerve kicks in. You're like, there, oh, great. Is there no style or previous or past fighter that you'd like to test yourself against? Not really, no. Or maybe some people would be like, nah, you'd have no chance. And you'd be like, nah, I think that's I That's what have I do chance. like. I do like when I get rid off. Yeah. I really enjoy that, mate. And that's just why. The, after the post fight interview for that one I was like fuck you to the bookmakers mate who all ripped me off because all of you did even my own UK journalists you all ripped me off as well so that's a big one of them to mm. all of you and it felt great mate yeah. it really did any predictions for the last fight? Um, Bub is a solid competitor he's a NCAA champion Yeah. not just NCAA wrestler NCAA champion that means he was the best wrestler in the whole United States at that time that's a big accolade in the United. That's a big, that's like being the best footballer in England mm. for a year. So he's going to be a tough fight. Um, he looks, he's looked great this season. He's won three in a row as well. 
Um, he fell short last year, like myself, in the semis, and we're both hungry for it. And I'm just excited. I really like Bubba Jenkins, though. Mm. like him as a person. I've spent a lot of time with him and his uh, coach and stuff around all the fight weeks and that. Great guy. Really looking forward to testing myself against him. So how, this, I mean, this is a, a, a weird thing. How does it feel when you're fighting someone <coughs> that you don't particularly have any dislike for that or somebody you might like just like this situation? Like how, how do you get around that kind of like, yeah, you're not a bad guy, but I've got to kind of kill you today. Well, <laughs> like, I shared a, a bump bed on the Ultimate Fighter for six weeks with a guy and ended up going out in Manchester. We ended up being top mates and then three months down the line after being top pals, the text was both and said, email off the UFC, you're fighting each other. He calls me up. He said, "Oh, have you checked the email?" I said, no. "He said I'm on." He said, "I'm on the finale." I said, "Who are you fighting?" Yeah. And he went, "You." <laughs> and I'm like, I'm checking my phone. And I went, Fucking hell! I went. I see him three months in, and we knocked seven shades of shit out of each other. And it meant we're still mates to this day. Yeah, it means nothing to me. Yeah, yeah. The, the cage door closes. I'll fight. Business. Him. Yeah, business, mate. And then after it, that's where Chris Wade went wrong in the last fight. Yeah. He got very emotionally attached to that fight, and I didn't. Yeah. He was. He wanted to kill me, mate. And I was like. This is all playing against you, it really is. Because yeah. I've been in that position where I've let guys get to me <laughs> and gas off the round one. Your whole, body, your whole body changes, right? Because you season you're and you've got too much anger and it's like you, there's no flow, there's no, yeah, exactly. there's no water. And I've yeah. seen that inside him and I thought, you're just going to stiffen up. And he did. Yeah, yeah. And exactly what he was going to do. Whereas Bubba, I know we've got uh, love for each other and I just know it's going to be a competitive MMA fight and it's mm. what the fans want to see. When is that one now? November 25th couple of months bit of time finally to send you my logo <laughs> finally a bit of time mate usually they're, they're knocking us out every six weeks yeah and they've said oh you have a bit of a break for the final i don't even know what to do with myself yeah. and then what happens after that million dollars yeah one of these yeah um and then i'll be on top of the world mate 16 years of hard work will all come to fruition on that night and then <laughs> six weeks go by and they're like all right come on oh god it's gonna be hard to answer the phone with an account like that yeah right <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? It will be, but at the same time, like you said, it's not about the money. After you're gonna get bored after a while, you're gonna be like, "No one's punched me in the face for a while, and this is not." Because you're gonna be chasing that, like you said, that feeling, right? Of who's gonna take me there again? I hope not. Yeah, I don't want to be that forty-five-year-old. But do you think a million is enough to retire these days? Not in Dubai, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, that's a good two weeks, bro. Wow. <laughs> Five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You have, have a wicked month. Most. <laughs> and, then, and then you'll be calling back your agent listen, and you'll be like, listen. I know I'm skinned. I should have gone back to Manchester with this one. Listen, morning. Manchester, yeah. I'll be sound, right? Yeah. Out here, it's different, isn't it? So, but um, like I say, I live a very easy. If you see where I lived and what I drive, mate, you would laugh your head off because I'm just like, I don't give a fuck about any of that. So yeah, yeah. it will be more than enough for me to last a long time anyway. I don't yeah. know about forever, yeah. but it, it's this, mate. It's one of these. Yeah, yeah. It's one of these just to sy symbolise what's going on in my life and how mm. how hard it's been to get here and all the people that said I couldn't. But I mean, you're going to have to win another one because after I take the first one for my props exactly. <laughs> on the shelf, you're going to have it's to get another one for you. It's heavier than that one anyway. Yeah, yeah, Trust yeah. me, it's a but big, I heavy belt. Uh, Fakhreddin brought his belts as well when he came from uh, Brave. And I was like, how do you drag these in behind you, dude? They were so heavy. heavy. He's in PFL now, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Tariq. Tariq as well. Oh, loads. But Mo isn't fighting now, right? Because he got he got yeah. concussion yeah, that's pissing right. about in a, in a gym can't in believe it Liverpool so like I spoke to him when I was there because I was like yo let's hang out and he was like yeah sure just come to Liverpool I was like no it's not like Dubai bro <laughs> I'm in London like and then I was like what are you doing in Liverpool and he was like yeah my friends told me to come here it was going to be uh. you know it was going to be hot I brought some shorts it's not hot it's raining and I was like well, has he never been nah Imagine going to England and your and first place Liverpool. is Liverpool. Yeah, wow. do you know what I mean? Poor it's guy. Like, yeah. Scousers everywhere. Let's talk about Paddy. Paddy the baddie. You guys are good friends. Me and Paddy um, go back over 10 years now. He was the guy that was coming up. I was the guy that was coming up. And mm. we always tried to make them match up. And for whatever reason, it never happened. And then we had a bit of beef. We had a lot of beef for a long time. Mm. It was what was the beef for? You know, because he was fighting on Cage Warriors. I was fighting on Bammer at the time. And then we were trying to make a deal. Yeah. We were trying to make a deal just so, so we could fight. And it never came to fruition. I blamed him, he blamed me. And then it just got to videos of, fuck you. you da, da, da. Then it got to him having a go at me. And then uh, he got in the UFC, started smashing it. I got PFL, started smashing it. And then he just DM'd me and went, try to call me podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all right then. 
yeah. turned up and there was that much respect on that podcast. When you watch it, you'll be like, yeah. fucking hell, we're just two young lads with the same dream from yeah. the same area. From the same area and you understand each other. Like, wow. we'll be for size. It was crazy, yeah, mate. Yeah. You we know of, each you other. The, you were the same guy. We've both been through right? it. Yeah, yeah. And like, he's obviously smashing it now and there's not one bit of jealousy in my body. There's not one bit of hatred. I'm so happy for the guy and I mean mm. that from the bottom of my heart. And... Uh, I just watch all these guys online hating on him, mate, yeah. and I think I just think you. Do you know what I mean? And like, yeah, it's just, bro. People will hate on everyone, and the funniest thing is when you see who's hating. Eggs, it's like, mate. You've Little never, legs on you've never fought in a, you know what I mean? You haven't even fought a, a, a breeze, uh, yeah. like a, a hard breeze. Um, but the thing I like about Paddy is he's got that factor, that energy factor. He's just yeah. a lad, and he's he's got that kind of McGregory thing. Yes. You know, in a sense where you kind of look forward to his talk after more than the fight. Do you know what I mean? Because oh, you know he's going to say something funny. Or he's, he's the guy you'd have a pint and a chippy yeah, yeah, with yeah, exactly. on a Saturday night. And yeah. he's the he's the man's man. Yeah. And uh, I always knew he was. Manx and Scousers were the same people, basically. It's 45 minutes down the road. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And, like, people really relate to him. Same with Tyson Fury and mm. all, like... Yeah, you've been out a couple of times with uh, Tyson Fury. But that's Fury, what I'm saying, like... That he's a bit of a party. People just think, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, wow, I know him. Even though yeah. you don't know him, you know him. Yeah, yeah. And like, sometimes with Southerners, sometimes yeah. with you don't get that. Yeah, yeah. AJ, you don't get that. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You don't really think, yeah. oh, I can have a pint with you. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. yeah there's going to be a bit awkward, and do you know what I mean? But you always. Know. But it's it's like that. It's just a known thing. The further up you go, the more fun you're going to have. You know that. <laughs> like, there is no way you're going to Scotland or Ireland and going to a pub. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they're not, and you're not just cracking up laughing by the end yeah, of it yeah. and pissed off your head and do you know what I mean like I've been to Scotland I've been to Ireland and you know they're just fucking hilarious bro like they, they don't stress like in, like London you know and stuff like that there's no stress there it's just like ah oh, fuck it the day started it's gonna finish soon and let's have bro. as much fun as we can in, until the sun sets you know and then I mean? like they put people in front of me or Paddy all the time and we just terrorise them because we're just yeah, so yeah. used to banter the banter they don't have the banter and yeah, we're yeah, just yeah. terrorising them verbally yeah, yeah. and they're like just the parts up they're looking at you and they want to kill you yeah, yeah. but really we're just like the lads that had a laugh in school um, that you yeah, learn yeah. along the way as being English and growing up yeah, yeah. and like it proper parks the Americans up mate they don't yeah, know yeah. what to do or what to say yeah. and then like you'll relate to that because i'm like oh that's how i used to talk to my mate yeah, in school exactly. yeah, and yeah. then you end up with a massive fan base yeah because people just relate to you yeah it's mad do you feel like you you and paddy's fan base are the same people i feel like they could be very similar yeah very similar manx and scousers are the same people i've got a lot of scouse friends um and he's got a lot of Manx friends and before any of us had any followers we we both like knew that we were the same person, mm. and like I'd still have mates that would know him that had known me, but we weren't known on the scene yet of MMA, and now it's just grown into this. He's way surpassed me in in terms of all that, but he still knows when we sit each other's presence that me and you are yeah, the, the same, same level, person. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and, and there's that mutual respect because you're both Spartans, right? So you're both warriors as well. So that's also a different kind of something that people don't understand they don't have that same connection right yeah we've gone through the weight cuts we've gone through the knockouts we've gone through all the hardship of uh hard training camps and losses and and yeah. you look at it and i think wow you've done the exact same as me and yeah, i've yeah. just been doing it at a different on a different platform than you yeah you're different under three Literally. three different letters yeah but we've been on the same journey it's mad yeah, mate it's madness how do you prepare or choose your team. Like you said, you got Jag, Jag of Striking, helping you out with your fights, with your pads and stuff. How how do you choose your, your people? I've had the same coach who taught me my first punch at 16 to now. To now? Wow. To now. Because I'm heavily loyal, mate. Yeah. And like... It's I, another Mancunian I, thing as well. I don't want to leave people behind yeah. that have been there for me. For when there was one person turning up to Nottingham to watch me fight, to when there's however 6,000 in the copper box, Still the same guy that stood next to me because, like, he's been there when nobody give a fuck about me and he's the guy that did it for no accolades and he's the guy that believed in me when no one else mm. did. So I make sure that he's at every fight. Um, I did the whole last camp with him. Obviously, it's hard sometimes because I'm moving around, um, but I do make sure he's at the fights. Um, and same grappling guy, just my friend who's been there from day one. I make sure they're all at the fights and we're all having a laugh mm. leading up to it. I think that's so important. Like the last one, I landed on a Tuesday in London. I had my three mates were sharing a, a, a hotel room, not even the size of this. Three mm. of us leading up to the fight. 
and having a laugh all the way through. And I just think that brings the best out in me mm. because that's how I started. Why am I going to get a, a posh hotel room on my own now with getting my feet rubbed and things? That's not how I came up. So Yeah, let's talk after you win that million, bro. I'm going to FaceTime you and yeah, you'll be like, yeah. yeah, sorry, mate, I'm just getting my feet rubbed. Could you call me back but in I a think, minute, bro? I think that's where people go wrong, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah why, would you, why would you change a winning formula? And like All these fighters do. It's mad. They think, oh, no, I need this now. No, mm. you don't. You, don't, you need yeah. the people that are bleeding you and been yeah. there from day one. And you need to stay in that same place that made you hungry. Because yeah. if you start, I mean, look at Connor, for example. It's one thing making a lot of money, but chilling on a yacht before your fight and, and you know, just really kind of overdoing the, the indulgence can affect you as a fighter. I don't blame him, no, mate. He's done so much for the no, sport. No, don't get me wrong. After he got that, got to where he was. Yeah. The when when he was winning. Yeah, yeah. Side. After that. It's, he's just been pissing about for money. It's like chilling. I don't even think... I mean, I know he cared about the win, but not the same way as before, bro. When he was coming up, man. Yeah, when bro, he was coming up, he was unstoppable. That and you could see it. That documentary, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. is... I relate to him. that so much, mate. When I watch all mm. the shit gyms he was in and the way he was coming up and he'd pull out bills with debts on and fucking throw them away and then his bird was there making his scrans. Yeah, making yeah. His, she was working to make sure yeah, he yeah. could make it. I've been there, mate. I've yeah. been there through everything he's gone through. That 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 notorious documentary is absolutely incredible. Mm. So, top five fighters of all time, goats, in your eyes. <coughs> mm, good question. Across all, Anderson Silva. Oh, me yeah. boxing as well, or just MMA? Uh, let's do MMA first, and then okay. we'll do boxing. Anderson Silva, Jose Aldo. Um, you've got to throw McGregor in there. Just for what he's done for the sport outside of fighting, taking it to where it is now. Um, Michael Bisping's in mine just because he's got one eye, mate. Yeah, yeah. And won a world title on one eye. Had six UFC fights with one eye. Yeah. Like, my personal is Michael Bisping, and the fifth one who would have put in there. I mean, John Jones, the greatest fighter that ever walked planet Earth, ever. That's a good list. I like it. That's it's, a it's great. Not fighter. far off my one. I'd, I'd supplement Mighty Mouse in there for sure. Yeah. And I wouldn't I'd, blame I'd put him. GSP in there as well. Because I feel like I know I a lot of people. Him. I know a lot of people don't like GSP, but I feel like he did the same, if not more, than Connor, but in a different way. Yeah, a different era when it wasn't yeah. as popular. Do you know what I mean? And he didn't talk. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Connor. So he did it without. Yeah. He did it with yeah, his fist. Did. Do you know he what did. I mean? Um, Agreed, and he's the first person that started training the way people train. Yeah, him. exactly. He's gymnastics, the one that used to, he was yeah, gymnastics he was on, with the rings, loved it, loved um, it. taking shark cartilage. Yeah, you know all those little supplements and stuff. Like he, I think scientifically, Agreed. changed the way Agreed. people train. So I think he definitely needs to be in there. Agreed. Are you a boxing fan? Yeah, so so. Like it's not the same now, is it? Completely changed, mate. Yeah. The fight, the best don't fight the best, mate. Yeah, that's. I see. I think that's my main issue with boxing. Yeah. At least UFC, you've got the UFC. I mean, PFL, you've got the PFL. But boxing, this, it's like, how can there be eight heavyweight champions of different... That's stupid, The mate. WBO, the WBA, the, the FF, my ass, the this, the this. And it's like, there surely should just be one belt. If you so weigh this much, fight for it. Like. The difference with the UFC, mate, and I say this to everyone, is you get an email, you are fighting... Joel Bloggs and you have on to. this date. Yeah. You ain't got a choice, yeah, mate. Yeah. Do the boxers they're they pick picking the fights till twenty five and oh. You're not fought anyone they fight bin, man. And they don't fight the fans fight. Bro. Like if they changed that now and did just just literally did a poll. Here are four yeah, fighters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever no gets chance. the biggest votes no are gonna chance. fight each other. No chance. Like AJ Fury should have happened ages ago. Too ages many ago. too many hands in there, too much greed. And it's like everybody is switching to MMA because like with the PFL, like with UFC, you get a text message, you get an email. This is your opponent on this date and that mm. is it. Mm. That's it. That's it. And I, I embrace that because I was ducked for a few years when I was trying to find fights and it was happening to me and it pissed me off. Now it's like you don't have a choice. Yeah. Even if the guy doesn't want to fight you, you ain't mm. got a choice. And you know what? That's as close to real life as possible. Yeah, it's great. Because if someone's going to fight you in the street, you can't go, uh, listen, mate, just one second. Can your friend fight me instead <laughs> over there? Mate, You're so fighting, bro. That's it. I'm fighting you now, bro. You ain't got a chance to talk about it. Imagine I've got a broken hand and I've got yeah. a staph infection and I'm injured and said you've got six weeks to fight. 
Khabib's best mate, who's 19 and 0. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. Well, guess what? I fucking did it, yeah, mate. Yeah. I tightened up this drawstring yeah, and exactly. I got in there and I had a goal. I didn't win, yeah. but who cares? Yeah. Made me a better person, made me a better fighter. Yeah, and made you a bit like Wolverine with your little exactly. knives that come out. Can shout you, can out you pop them out yet or not? <laughs> shout out to Dr. Shin, mate, in LA. What a guy. Done. Sorted me right out. Exactly. I think that, from to touch on what we were talking about before, I think that it's much easier for MMA people to go into boxing than boxers to go into MMA. Because I've heard boxers say, all right, I'm going to go and do an MMA fight. And, nah, bro, it's, not this, it's, it's a different animal, man. It's a different animal. Yeah, you could be a good boxer, but the second that you're fighting someone and he, he does a level change and all of a sudden he's disappeared from that bro. from that boxing height there. Like, do you know it mad? takes a lot of training, bro. Do you know when this this topic in particular gets me angry because I remember when Connor fought me with her. Yeah, yeah. And I've got so many boxing friends and boxers that I know and they were all online going, see, we told you and all that. I think, bro, Throw away all the rules. Let's if fight. You, if you put, if you switch that the other way around, Come it on. probably wouldn't have and lasted. Look how well he did. Twenty seconds. And they're all going on with himself. And you know who have got the biggest respect for in boxing? He's Logan Paul. No, <laughs> Clarissa Shields. Yeah. So I'll tell you why? Yeah. Because she was like, "Fuck it, I'll give it a go." Yeah. She won one. She lost one. But yeah. guess what? She fought full MMA rules. She didn't specialize anything. Yeah, yeah. She had a good goal, mate. Mm. She won one. She lost one. And she's the only world class boxer that actually had the balls. Yeah. And she's a woman. To go, I will fight these people and I will give it a proper go. She went to Albuquerque and trained with John Jones for six months and just give it a go. And I think, yeah. fair play to you. Yeah, but it's not the same though. I honestly think that the the McGregor, uh, McGregor, yeah, the McGregor um, fight with Mayweather would have lasted max 25, 30 seconds. In MMA? Yeah. Of course. Like, I don't think... One low kick, he would have fell yeah, over. Yeah. One, one kick. Bang, he would have been yeah. like, what was that? The whole leg would have seized up and that would have been it. Ugh, I mean... Tyson, your boy Tyson's talking about it now. He's like, I want to train for a year. He <laughs> would though. Come. Yeah, because he's heavy as fuck, bro. bro. He's heavy. Yeah, yeah. And he's a gypsy. Yeah. They, they were bare knuckle fighting I feel like he's anyway. adaptable enough to do it, yeah. I agree. And yeah. he's a big lump, mate. Yeah. Like, he's a big, 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 imposing man. Like, I can't see many of these heavyweights even getting near him, yeah. mate. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's an interesting one because they're doing the hybrid rules, right? They're trying to do him and Nganu. So I I, I want to know what those rules are and I want to know which gloves they're wearing and I want to kind of... Did you see the Mighty Mouse fight that he had with, a, I forget his yeah, name, yeah, the kickboxer? Yeah. Rotang. So, yeah, Rotang, yeah. yeah. So it was first first round was kickboxing, second round was MMA and it was just like he just had to get past that first round. I just don't bro. know how I feel about all that. I don't yeah. know how I feel about Fury adjusting the rules. Yeah, it's got to be one or the other, right? I don't know if I can just watch it. Like, mm. this, what is this? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We're just making up rules now to, to see who, like, if you're going to box Fury, box Fury. If you're going to do MMA, do MMA. And, like, I just think Nganu, mate, it's like, you can't box Tyson Fury, mm. bro. I'm sorry. Mm. You can't do it. As much as I love you, bro. I like it, but that uppercut against the. Uh, um, no, forget all that, bro. What's his name? Boxing, no, no, that, that 12 rounds boxing he did against with Tyson Fury is. Not what you should. Yeah, be. but it's anyone's game though. When it comes to heavyweights. No, bro, please. I know what I know no, what you're, you're saying. One of them guys. No, 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 please. No. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Like I Francis wouldn't Ngannou expect it to happen. Cannot box size. I, I wouldn't expect it to happen. But there could be a fluky punch, bro. I even know. Oh, bro, you actually be serious about that? Yeah. There could be. If we're talking MMA gloves, I actually know um, Francis Ngannou's coach, <clears throat> and we spoke about this fight. <clears throat> He said he ain't got no chance in a boxing ring against yeah. Fiora. That's his coach who trains him every yeah, day. He went, game, bro. He's not going to beat him in a boxing match. We're just trying to adjust the rules. Fair yeah. play. I don't blame you, but yeah. in a pure boxing... Again, you're talking he, about he the needs greatest. to do that because of the money thing, but yeah, he's not I getting know, enough money. Shame. But the funny thing is as well, it's like, I don't think this whole, you know, the Logan Pauls and the KSIs and all this stuff, they're all doing this, these boxing things. They couldn't do it with MMA. Yeah, you can't just dive in MMA, can you? You can't, you can't be like, we're going to do a, a social media and then he starts calling out MMA people. It's never going to happen they, because they, they that just to, shows you. They even tried to do a white-collar MMA in Manchester. They, they've got white-collar. Bo- Bro, do you think... It's going to work. They did one show. Yeah, like, it be what? people just rolling on the floor, hugging each other, not doing anything, but just trying to hold them for as long as possible. Come on, That's bro. it. Like, forget it, bro. Yeah. It's a fucking... The most skilled art on planet Earth, MMA. Yeah. You're not going to learn it in six weeks. Anyone can throw a punch. Yeah. You, you grow up throwing punches, yeah, but yeah. 
show me a triangle, mate. Do you know yeah. how long it is to perfect a triangle? Yeah, yeah. Alone. Yeah. Show me a double leg takedown. Yeah, yeah. It's like, come on. No, no, people don't even understand level changes. Like, if you tell them that, they'll be like, like what? Yeah. Nah, forget it. Forget any white. MMA is a very intricate system of arts put together that will take you a hell of a long time, mate. It took me 16 years. Mm. How do you see it evolving? I just think we're going to get super athletes now. Mm. I think you're going to get like the Nganus, people that are just picking up and going, this kid's athletic as fuck. That's and instead of getting them into American football or football, they'll be like, MMA's paying this much now. Like, mm. let's just breed them. So like breeding them, yeah, like yeah. breeding them. It's pit bulls, man. Yeah, literally like, he looks athletic. Throw him in an MMA studio for six months, see how he gets on. And that, I just mm. think that's the way it's going now. Yeah, how do you feel about PEDs in, in, in fighting? It's everywhere, mate. It's disgusting, especially like, I mean, at the UFC have took a massive approach towards it. And I don't know how people can. Uh, have they though, when, you, when you're kind of, I think you're have. in Brazil and they're getting Brazilians to test you and Brazilians, and you're a Brazilian fighter. They're going to be a bit more lenient and maybe bring it to you with some piss in it and then just... I've heard about this. Yeah, it's a bit but, dodge. But then I'm like, what What else can they do? They're, they're ticking all the boxes, mate. They really mm. are. I've been at Dominic Cruz's house. I've been at other fighters' house where six in the morning, get out, blood, piss. Mm. Like on a random day, like... Yeah. How much better can it get than that? I think they should make a Royd League. I still say that now, no. bro. I think they should let everyone do whatever they want, whatever PEDs they wow. want, and everyone's on it in the league. Wow, it's you know terrifying. What I mean? And just let them fucking rumble, wow. mate. Well, that, if they're that signing, if they're watch, signing up for that, well, yeah. fucking hell, mate, there's a lot of leagues that are hard doing that. Yeah, mate. exactly. So right. you don't have to look no, far but, for shit But you like know that. what? I, I think that about all sport, I mean, I think there should be a Royd Olympics as well. Like where, you know, can you imagine how... Faster, fast, yeah. yeah. How fast it would be. People would be throwing a discus like a, a thousand meters. It'd be fun to watch. It'd be fun it? to watch, yeah, but right? mate, there's so much of it going on still in in yeah. all sports that yeah. you're not far yeah, but off. Would, but this would be fair though. Everyone signs true, up. True. You have to show your cycle to get onto the thing to, wow. to get onto the team. You have to pass it. You know, they show you. Have get, you done all your bits it, and bobs? It's the opposite of the uh. the test when they come and test you. They you go in to take your no that you do. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. You go in to take your boys. They make sure you you've got them, and then that's it. And have you, you seen see Icarus? Bigger. Yeah, bro, that was. Come on, bro. That was crazy, like, right? If you haven't seen Icarus yeah, and yeah. you don't think dopamine's yeah, up there, Icarus. Mate. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That guy's brave as well. Wow. That guy's brave because it's like, those Russians don't piss about when people whistle. State sponsored, when, bro. When they whistle blow, though. <laughs> I wouldn't want to whistle blow as a Russian, bro. Fucking hell. Because that's yeah. some dangerous shit. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard from him for a while. Yeah. So wow. You can thank Netflix for that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's some madness. Have you, because this is an interesting thing. I don't know how it works in fighting, but, you know, like we were talking about Sylvester, he's a very good friend of yeah. mine, and he was like, there's a massive issue in football where people don't get the right financial advisors while they're making the money. They stop playing football, they end up becoming broke and divorced. And, you know, they, he, he gave me a, a statistic that was so high hmm. of the divorces that people have after they leave because wow. they're used to a certain lifestyle, right? And the wow. women and all that stuff. And, and then they're home. And they're like, well, what are you doing around in the house? Because you're supposed to, do you know what I mean? They, they've been spending their whole time out playing, right? So now they're in the home, they realize, well, they both realize I don't really like you much, right? Because they're spending so much time Fucking with them hell, that's it, and they're not true. making the money and stuff like that. So things kind of change. Do you have anything like that in place where you've got your ideas of how you want to make sure that if anything happens, because again, being a fighter is like being a PT in a sense. Mm. I mean, it's not, but in a sense where your body you break your, like yeah. Jaguar breaks his arm. Yeah. He's not making any money. Your temple. Do you know what I mean? I mean? So, for me, I think it's having the again the guy who taught me my first punch, my mum, mm -hmm. all these people that keep me grounded that help me to make decisions. Because sometimes I get clouded by yes men who all like yeah this is what you should do. But then mm. I actually have invest I, in crypto. <laughs> oh mate, I've yeah, done yeah. that as well. Yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. But I actually have a very solid core of people that want the best for me yeah. and they know what's best for me and they've known me from a child and I mean like running around the playground to now so there's no way I can go wrong with that core around mm. me it's the people that lose the core mm. and lose themselves within the sport start of having entourages and stuff of, yeah. of, of these new friends that 
started turning up out of nowhere. Do you know what I mean? And I, I just, I know that won't be me. I'm too grounded for that. Yeah. Just remember to give me your email address so I can send you that logo. Yeah. You won't let the logo go. It's not much time, bro. I just want it on there, bro. <laughs> Let's do it. Is there anything that you felt like we missed out? No, I think that was a fucking really good episode. Yeah, I touched yeah. on some bits and bobs there that I've not spoke about in a while, mate. And it's Is there anything that you haven't spoken about ever that we can get an exclusive on here? No, I think you got you got you got to me today. You got me yeah. some nice bits and bobs out there. Well, then I'll I'll end it with something that's just going to bring you back in again. <laughs> What's one thing that nobody knows about you? I, don't, I think my life's pretty public. You know, I do a lot of podcasts. I'm on socials all day, every day. But what's that one thing that nobody <sighs> knows about you? Apart from that time, you, the firework and the cat incident, but we don't want to bring that yeah, up. Yeah, leave that one. <laughs> I couldn't tell you, mate. Yeah. I'm very, I'm an open book. Yeah. I'm very honest. I don't hold back when I speak on podcasts to yeah. anybody. Yeah. I'm very honest about my life and what I do. So it's very hard for me to pin something, mm. what I could tell you that people don't already know. I'm very out there. Mm. It's not like I'm reserved. Yeah, I tell people as yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like even same if you said to Paddy or any of these, what yeah. just something we don't know. Be like, you're yeah, mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My life's out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but nah, there isn't, mate. To be honest, how would you like your legacy to be remembered? I mean, I don't like this is a big one question. to me. No, this <laughs> is a big one to me. Yeah. This is a big, big point because I'm a very, very, very proud Mancunian, mm. and I wanna, I wanna be remembered. I wanna be remembered as. I was the first person from Manchester to ever fight in the UFC, and that is a fact. I was breaking ground. I made my own show in Manchester. I did loads of bits and bobs in Manchester, and I would just like to be remembered in my hometown of the place where I grew up as, like, that was the guy. Mm. Like, we've had fighters and all that, but, you know, I want to be alongside the Ricky Attens, mm -hmm. the Rashfords, the the Liam Gallagher's, the, the, the people that people know. I want, although MMA is not as big as that, I would just like to be in the same conversation as the sporting heroes that I grew up looking at. Mm. So basically, Manchester, what he's saying is he wants a statue in the town square. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. the sooner you can get that up there, no pressure. he's happy to donate a bit of the million to, to build it. No pressure. Yeah. You know <laughs> we'll mean? get it done. No pressure. Yeah, Dude, it's been an absolute pleasure to um, to have you on and, and, and to talk and, and to get you to get to know you more than, than our previous conversations mm -hmm. in the gym. Um, I wish you the best of luck, honestly. There are not many people I respect. <laughs> and I'd say that <laughs> half of my friends are going to be like, what? Yeah. But like, that's why I'm friends with a lot of fighters because I understand and respect the sacrifices mm -hmm. that they make. And it's kind of funny because a lot of people think that the fight is the sacrifice, but it's not. It, it's the amount of time you put in between the fights that really does, you know, and you're doing it to entertain others as well. Do you know what I mean? So I think people need to appreciate the fucking hell that you guys go through so you can put on something fun for us to watch. Do you know what I mean? And and it's just, again, my hat goes off to you. I'm not doing that much training. <laughs> it's, 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 it takes a different breed mm -hmm. to be able to do what you do and keep doing it. Like, again, 16 years is is... And like we were saying, it's that rolling story of repeating itself again and again and again. So much respect to you, bro. And anytime you're you're wanting to come on again, we're happy to do another one. Maybe after the million, yeah. we, you know, we can I'll do another straight one. straight back and anyway to yeah, spend yeah. it in a exactly, week. Exactly, right? I'll be up five with you, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been a pleasure, man. Thanks for taking out the time and coming down, man. Appreciate, appreciate it. Thank it, you for man. your time, bro. I've loved it. I love delving into a few topics today, mate. It's, it motivates me sometimes because... When you actually speak it, it's different from yeah, when yeah. you think it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, Thank yeah. you for and having you, me. And you speak things into reality as well. So let's talk about that million again one more time. Million dollars. Million on one of these dollars. Fat belts. Yeah, man. yeah. Can't let's wait. do it. Let's do it, guys. I've been AJ. He's been Brendan. Boom. <laughs>